Welcome to another Microsoft Access tutorial video. What we are going to go through today is uh, a discussion on the event model for Microsoft Access. See, in Microsoft Access, when you have a form, a lot of times the user interaction with the form will cause the programmer to need to program some actions behind the scene, like a button. Uh, and what kind of actions go on when a person clicks a button. Now we've talked about macros being attached to buttons, but there's also VBA code that can be attached to buttons, uh, error traps and messages that can be sent out with message boxes and items that can be done in a more elegant way than simply what is given to you to use in a macro. So what we wanna do is launch into a little bit of an overview of what you can do with the event model within Microsoft Access. And the events really come in several different categories. The first one is the Windows events. You know, when you open a form or close a form or open a report, close a report, that kind of thing. Even when you resize a particular form or report on the screen, you can actually capture that as an event and, and create an action underneath, underneath it. You have keyboard events where they'll uh, press down a key or let up on a key. You can capture that as well. Mouse events, of course, when they mouse, when they click the mouse, when they press the mouse button or let up the mouse button. You can capture whether a, a control or a form gets a focus. So they're tabbing through a, a form and they go from field to field and they come to one particular field and you want to present a dialog box or text information that, that tells them what to do with that particular field or, or information. I've even programmed under a, a text box, a double click function where I could send them to another form to add a record or add information that's not in a list box or a combo box. So I can capture that and I can take them to another form to add it and then refresh the data so that they can then uh, see it in the drop-down list. Those types of things there for, for focus events. Uh, data events. So they put in a certain kind of data, changing a row, updating, deleting, inserting a row. Uh, you can capture that action. You can capture whether they've decided to print something or they've decided to format a print job. And of course, there's the error uh, error handling events uh, that you can capture and pass them on to a solution to the problem rather than simply giving them the access message box if an error message occurs. So with those in those various categories, you can see that there's a lot that you can do. And all of those event types are put under various forms and reports and controls and in the various places in a form or report, okay? So what I wanna do now is go ahead and open Microsoft Access. I wanna go ahead and look at the report events first. And if I put the report in design view here and leave it highlighted in my box up here in the corner, which gives me my report highlighted here in the property sheet, I can look and see the kind of events that are available at the report level. So when this report becomes the current window, for example, or it is loaded, or it, it opens up and has no data. This particular program has an event procedure capturing information and basically saying that if it has no data, cancel the print job. That sounds reasonable to me. On click and on focus and lost focus are all different events that can be handled here based on the report opening. Now, each section also has its various different pieces of events that can be handled. So if we go to the report header, we have a few items that can be done in the report header. And these are actually quite similar as you look at all of these. You've got a report header. You have a page header that has very similar uh, events that you can capture, this product ID header, and then in the detail area. So the report has several places where you can put different event procedures underneath. They can either be macros or they can be VBA code. It really doesn't 
matter which one. It just matters which one is more elegant or, or doable for you as a coder to put a macro behind it or put an event procedure or VBA code uh, behind it. So I'm going to close up the report here and go look at a form. I'm going to put this form in design view. And the property sheet for a form is much more extensive. Notice the list here goes on beyond the bottom of the screen. I have to continue the scroll bar down to see the number of items that you can capture and take action on in an event procedure or macro and do various things that need to be done compared depending on the form and the form's purpose, okay? The event, the form also has very specific items. We have it set just to the form up here in the corner, but if we go to the form header, that number get, that list gets very, very slim. If we go to the detail area, it's pretty much the same. Where you have the bulk of the items that you can capture now is in these text boxes. So you see here, this is a basic text box. And you see the events listed here. You know, you have some mouse events, you have some focus events, you have some data-based events here, and then you have keyboard type events down here. So you have that same basic bunch of events here, but they're tailored to the item that you have highlighted. And this happens to be a text box. If I go to a combo box, this one here is a combo box. If I go there, it has a list it adds one to the list here. This is not in list, which of course would be appropriate for a combo box, but not appropriate necessarily for a text box. You also have buttons that have various different events. And of course, the most common of those would be on click. You know, when the mouse clicks on the button, what are we going to do with it? And what I'd like to do is show you the event procedure that's under this particular button because it is particularly instructive as to what can be done to handle a click on a button in this case. So this happens to be a delete button. The user, when they look at this delete button, I'm gonna close this and show you the form in form view. When they have this record in front of them, the programmers provided a delete button that allows them to then delete this particular record. Maybe they've sold that car and they, no longer want to have it in their list of products, for example. So they want to click this delete button. Well, when we click it, it brings up a dialog box, just like you would expect any Windows program to do. Brings up a dialog box that says, you're sure you want to delete this product. We see these all the time, but as a programmer in an access database, you have to add that functionality to the system. Uh, otherwise the delete button will just do what it's going to do and whatever code you've given it, here's a message that you can communicate with the user just to make sure that they really want to delete the button. So there's some various items that are in this message box that I want to point out because I'm going to go into the code and show you where each of those components resides in the code itself. So we have the title of the dialog box, delete product. We have the question mark icon here. We have the question itself. And then we have the yes and no buttons. So all of these things are components that we have to code in there. And we'll show you how Access makes it really quite easy for us to do that. So I'm going to click no here. And now let's go ahead and put this back in design view. And let's go look at that event procedure here. Now, so what we're going to do is uh, they're going to dimension explicitly dimension the text here. And one response is going to be L response, actually. L response means it is a long, which is the reason for the L. And then response is the response to the dialog box. And then prompt is going to be a string variable. And if we get an error, we want it to go to the error handler. So go to error handler. And the go to is the good old you know, basic go-to command that used to send us to a line number when we were coding linearly. Now it goes to a label down here, which is called error handler, and says if we get an error, we're going to put out a message box that's going to tell the error description 
and then it's going to resume and go to the error exit and error exit just exits the subroutine. So we've put in an error handler here that just, you know, communicates, lets somebody hit the OK button and that it en ends the subroutine. But the more interesting part here is what are we going to do with the dialog box? Well, the prompt is going to be, are you sure you want to delete this product? Now remember that was in the dialog box as a question just above the yes, no buttons that were in the in little dialog box. And so here's our message box construction. One response is going to be given a value from the message box. The prompt is going to be here and that's this question, remember? S prompt equals this. And then it's going to say VB question. Well, VB question, boy, it's a long way to say, put a question mark in the dialog box. It's that circle that was blue with the question mark in it. So VB question plus VB yes, no. VB yes, no tells it, put a yes, no button in there. This could be a VB okay cancel button just to give you a different uh, flavor on that one too. But VB yes, no will return either a yes or a no value depending on which of those two buttons gets pressed. And notice we went up here, it's going to give us a yes, no value, but a yes, no value is a Boolean number. And so it was given the value of data type of long. So VB yes, no is going to return a, a negative one or a zero. And then here's delete product. Remember where delete product was? That was the title of the dialog box. So here we constructed the entire dialog box in just one line. Now, we have to check to see what response the user gave us back. And so let's say if VB yes, meaning they responded yes here instead of no, if it's VB yes, then we're going to make sure the record is selected. Then we're going to give the command to delete the record. That ends our if then statement. If it's VB no, we don't care. We just pass on through this. We pass over the error exit. We pass over error handler and go straight to end sub if, if it's a VB no, just like I did when I said no, okay? So here we've put in a, a very elegant little bit of code. We've handled the error and we then constructed a yes, a, a a dialog box that would accept a yes or a no. We've then taken an if then statement to handle the one condition that we care about, which would be the yes option. If it's yes, then we're actually going to delete the record. If it's no, we're not gonna care. We're just gonna end the subroutine, close the dialog box and away we go. So we very elegantly handled that. Now let's do a quick review. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm going to put it back in form view and here's the delete button. If we click delete, we have the name of the box, we have the prompt, we have VB question, we have VB yes, no. And if I click no, it just bails out on it. If we click yes, it deletes the record. The record is no longer there. So it works exactly as the programmer expected. So that's the event handling model in Microsoft Access. I gave you only one example today, but I'm sure you can take it from there and get do a lot more um, with what coding is available and what VB can do for you. Hope to see you next time soon. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.